Thank you. Amazing. Can you hear me at the back? Perfect. Yes. So um, this morning I gave a session which was sort of the big picture of how Adobe's thinking about generative AI. This afternoon I want to show a particular pet project of mine. And if you look at it through the lens of storytelling, you might think that if you tell a story long enough, eventually the story tells you something. And um, so without further ado, back in 2000, 2013, I decided to do a vision uh, piece about the future of AI and what we thought AI might mean for the future of design. And I wanted to make it more exciting than designing websites because everybody assumed that would be rapidly changing. And my thesis was that if you can design things really quickly, then suddenly the fashion cycle would shrink from maybe an annual one or a seasonal one to maybe a matter of weeks or even minutes. And so I came up with a story where there are these three virtual agents. The one at the back is called Cece, and she's doing the creative design. The one at the front is on the left is doing the marketing analysis of market segments. And the one on the right is coordinating both and then acting as the interface to the user. So this was a theater troupe we put together out of volunteer employees. Um, and the story is that the spring collection is almost done, and suddenly there's a storm that's announced, which is going to completely derail the launch. So they scrambled to redesign the collection based on the designer who is the single owner of this, single employee of this business, redesign it, share it to the, with the designer who's sitting in a coffee shop sketching. She then tries on the design with a wearable garment, which changes electronically. So this was a nice metaphor. We thought, yeah, maybe one day science fiction. So um, where do you go with this story? So in one way, we follow the natural trajectory of Adobe, which is to say, um, what if you could take garments, just photographs, and then not only recolor them, but then retexture them as well. So for this, it's much harder because you have to reverse engineer the coordinates on the, on the fabric from a single dress. You want to recreate the folds and patterns. And so this is great for things like the modern version of catalogs, where you have a combinatorial explosion of fabrics and things. It used to be a very manual process to do this reverse engineering. Now we can do it automatically with AI. So the next one is, well, what if it's not the same garment, but you just want to do a virtual try-on, which is also a familiar idea. So in this case, it's some of our latest work on taking the image on the left, having a single image of the new garment, and then doing virtual try-on and showing a realistic looking person wearing that fabric. So this is great for e-commerce, but the reason I'm talking to you today is that story kept nagging at me and I thought, it's such a nice idea. What if we could actually build a dress that did that? So found another intern, brought her on board. This is Christine. She worked with TJ, who's the head of the Emerging Devices Group, and they built the dress on the far right. It looked fantastically futuristic. We tested all the components, we put it together, and it didn't work. So we kept trying, and we kept trying. She became a full-time employee. We then did the little swatches in the dress, uh, one to the left, and then we did the bag at the front, as well as what we call a canvas, a flat sheet of the material. And then we ended up going for a broke and doing 1,000 pixels, which feels like 1975, but they're really interesting pixels because of the form factor. So when you put that all together, you end up with a dress that um, has what we call petals. Um, you can also think of them as snake scales, if you're uh, into snakes. And they can change between being silver and white. And they do this by having a switchable diffuser, which is also flexible. So it's a relatively soft, lightweight garment. There are flexible printed circuit boards underneath to keep it thin, because the last thing you want to do is make somebody look different size than they are. And, um, and it's very low power. It can run for an hour on a postage stamp size battery and all day on a slightly bigger one. So this is what it looks like when it's in motion. Um, so not only can you download designs like you could with e-ink, but it runs at video rates. So you can actually make it fully animated. Um, it's sunlight visible, unlike LED dresses, which would use an enormous amount of power. And it's easy to embed sensors in it so it can respond to the orientation of the bag, in this case, so the graphic always stays pointing north. Um, and you can also uh, um, interact with it sort of using tilts, and then you can have multiple objects come together. So we showed this at Max uh, in LA. Everybody loved it. And then people took me aside and said, 
you might want to work with a real designer. And I said, the last dress took two years. And they said, great, uh, New York Fashion Week's in two months. Uh, <laughs> so we found a designer. Uh, oh, well, let me show you the, the, Ma the Max demo first. So here is, under the right lighting, it looks dazzling. Under the wrong lighting, it's a much more subtle effect. But um, here you can see the nice uh, dynamics and the fact that it can respond. In this case, she's moving very carefully in time with the movie to make, but we have actually got the sensors on board. And we even have voice recognition to change patterns in response to what you're saying. So then we work with Christian Cowan, who's an up and coming uh, British designer. And you can see here the uh, layered printed circuit boards. This is version two of the full dress. Uh, on the left is the flexible boards, and on the right we're adding is, is what's underneath. It turns out the belt is very important to keep the resistances low enough to switch all the circuits. It's, there are lots of emergent properties when you try to do this for real. And Christian Cowan loves stars, so his whole collection had a kind of emerging star theme. So the top half is classical primrose, and the bottom half is stars that are switchable using the same technology. So it has that sort of design graphic element. And then here's the movie that we did. Primrose is a wearable canvas for creativity. Part of Adobe's research mission is to explore new ideas and also to inspire people to think boldly about the future. We showed a version of it at Max last year, and now we're working on a new garment to show at New York Fashion Week. I was just going through videos and was immediately blown away by how just awesome it was. I kept on DMing it to everyone in my office, being like, how do we work with them? We need to be the first. The Adobe tools, the Adobe spirit, everybody is very collaborative. Christian's team, they seem very collaborative. So then we were like, okay, we have the right people and the right team. Let's make history. For the dress design, we start with the dress pattern that we bring into Adobe Illustrator. And then from there, we design all the guidelines for where the boards are going to go. And the top two thirds has our iconic Adobe Primrose petals. And this tells us where all the petals go. So let's cut out some petals, shall we? If you have something called a switchable diffuser, which looks like a piece of frosted glass, you could have a material that went from looking like white paint to looking like a mirror. Each petal is connected to the next one, and you send a whole bunch of bits through this, which then controls whether the petal is getting a certain polarity of AC or shorted out to zero. Mapping out this dress, we had to be very precise. There's a lot hidden within a very small area of fabric. Afterwards, we use a lot of After Effects to kind of create the content that goes on the dress. How do you control specific petals? The new software tools we have in uh, simulations create different patterns on the garment. So let's do yeah, like I want it to stars. like feel almost as organic as possible. As possible? Okay. Yeah, I see, so that's awesome. The last dress took us about three years. This one, from concept to completion, it's been two months. Getting to lead a project of this magnitude at this speed has been really exciting, a real opportunity to show off what Adobe Research can do and what Adobe Tools can do. I'm really excited for the future of fashion and technology. I hope people are just inspired and looking for ways to kind of merge the two. It's important to just keep on breaking boundaries and to keep on pushing yourself. What's amazing about the software is it allows you to just create endlessly. And really, Adobe just allows you to dream. It's a science fiction future, but it's one that we think we know how to make come true. I feel it's necessary to invent the future because I'm impatient to see it. So that gives you a sense of where we are today, where we would like to go next. Thank you. Imagine that you have an outfit that you can wear to the office and then when you go to the reception afterwards, you can change the fabric or the design to be more playful or leave me alone, whichever mood you're in. Imagine that as you cross the street, it turns into something much more visible so you don't get run over and then turns back to the design when you get to the other side. Um, everyone would like it to be in color. Some people have said, could I design my own patterns? And of course you could. So there could be a whole ecosystem of aftermarket upgrades and you know other designers expressing themselves on independent of the fabric and people could do it themselves and we think this will just be a new form of expression and I can't wait until there's a party full of people wearing these uh, garments and swapping patterns and you know going to sporting events and having things that respond to the action and so on so um, the difference when you wear something is it becomes part of your identity, and I really think that changes. Think how much we're bonded to our phones, both for good and bad. 
I hope that this will get people to look up <laughs> rather than looking down and also to engage with each other. And uh, with that, uh, I hope that in some way you get to join me in this exciting, plausible future. Thank you.